In this particular video, we are going to talk about common ion effect for KSP reactions. So for example, if we're given, let's say, uh, barium hydroxide, which I believe is insoluble. Here is our, oh, got ahead of myself. Here's our KSP equation for that. And I'm, of course, got a solid on one side, and I've got my ions, my solubility products on the other side. If I had a flask of barium hydroxide, so I've got solid barium hydroxide, and then I've got barium ions and hydroxide ions floating around in solution. And to this flask, let's say that we add sodium hydroxide. What do you know about sodium hydroxide? It is a strong base and it completely disassociates. If you look at your solubility chart, it tells you it completely disassociates. So I end up with sodium ions and I end up with hydroxide ions floating around. So I'm only gonna put the hydroxide in there because the sodium is not going to affect anything. It's not going to react with anything. But you'll notice I have this hydroxide ion that is in common with the hydroxide ion of my equilibrium KSP equation. So there I've just put, as a result of that, we have stressed my equilibria KSP. And I've stressed it because we've increased the hydroxide ion concentration in this flask by adding the sodium hydroxide. And so there's always going to be a direct counteraction, according to Le Chatelier. It says we've got to decrease that hydroxide in order to reestablish equilibrium. And so to do that, if I need to decrease it, I've got to consume it. So that means that we will have a shift, and that shift will occur to the left. So it shifts left in this reaction in order to decrease the hydroxide. And when it does that, it produces more barium hydroxide. So it decreases the solubility because less of it is willing to go into solution. So if you have any common ion in a KSP, it will always decrease the solubility. Now, a second piece to that though is, what if we add instead, let's say that we now don't have my sodium hydroxide, so let me see if I can delicately erase that. What if now we add into this HCl? And this is a different story. Again, we have a strong acid, so we have hydrogen and chloride floating around now. The chloride isn't going to react. Oh, actually, I have chloride that will react with barium chloride, don't I? <laughs> All right, so let's not use that one. Let us use, um, let's use nitric acid. So let's bag that up. All right, so nitric acid, so we've got H plus and we've got NO or our nitrate. Now the nitrate won't react. Um, the barium nitrate's completely soluble. But I do have now H plus floating around and it's looking for a base, a part of a base to react with and there's a hydroxide. And so as a result, that H plus is going to react with my OH minus. So we've got OH it's going to be reacting with my OH minus that is in my above equilibria to produce water. And so as a result, what happens is we've also created a stress. And the stress in this case is we are decreasing the hydroxide. And Le Chatelier says that we will have a counteraction and increase the hydroxide in order to go back to equilibrium. And as a result, it will shift... So it's going to shift now to the right, so I'm going to write that out, shift to the right in order to head back to equilibria and it will produce more ions. And so as a result of producing more ions, it will increase the solubility of barium hydroxide. So common ions decrease it. Ions that react 
with the ions of the KSP increase the solubility.